Welcome to the next part of the module on Android Concurrency. Now that we've described the structure and functionality of Java threads, we'll motivate the need for Java synchronization and scheduling mechanisms to protect against data corruption due to race conditions, which arise when an application depends on the sequence or timing of processes or threads for it to operate properly, as described in this link, and ensure that threads execute in the right order to meet their synchronization and scheduling requirements. To make the discussion concrete, we'll motivate the need for these mechanisms in the context of two examples. The first example is a program with two Java threads that attempt to communicate by passing messages via a shared queue. The second example is a program with two Java threads that attempt to alternate printing ping and pong on the computer console. Even if you have a lot of experience developing concurrent software, you might want to skim through this video since we'll revisit these examples throughout the rest of this module to illustrate key Java synchronization and scheduling mechanisms. Our first example is a simple concurrent producer-consumer program that attempts to pass messages via an object whose interface is modeled loosely on the Java Util Concurrent Array Blocking Queue class, described in this link, whose put and take methods NQ and DQ elements in a synchronized manner. This UML sequence diagram shows the design of the program, which has a main entry point method that creates an instance of buggy queue and then creates and starts producer and consumer threads whose run methods call buggy queues put and take methods to pass messages concurrently from the producer to the consumer. To showcase a common synchronization problem, We'll examine the buggy queue implementation, which is available at this link. The elements in the queue are stored in a resizable Java array list, described at this link, that's instantiated with a string. Buggy queues put and take methods add and remove strings from the tail and the head of the underlying MQ list, respectively. The main entry point method of this program creates and starts two threads whose run hook methods called buggy queues put and take methods to produce and consume string messages concurrently. So far, the implementation seems straightforward. However, the important question is what output will this code produce? Depending on various factors, such as the underlying hardware and software infrastructure, the answer most likely will be scrambled output or an index out of bounds exception due to race conditions. The problem with buggy queue is that its implementation doesn't prevent critical sections in the put and take methods from being run by multiple threads concurrently. The ArrayList documentation at this link clearly states that its implementation is not synchronized. Therefore, if multiple threads access an ArrayList instance concurrently, and at least one of the threads calls remove, as we do in this example, it must be synchronized externally, or the list can be corrupted by concurrent access. These types of race conditions are hard to detect and debug due to the inherent complexities of concurrency discussed in this earlier video. For example, the behavior of this program will vary depending on factors like the number of cores or properties of the underlying operating system scheduler, which makes development and quality assurance processes tedious, error-prone, and non-portable. We'll fix these problems by applying various Java synchronization and scheduling mechanisms covered later in this module. Our second example shows how two Java threads can be created and used in an attempt to alternate printing ping and pong on the computer console. We use a Java console application to avoid dealing with some Android multi-threading design restrictions, described at this link, until after we've discussed its user interface threading model later in this section. This slide shows a UML sequence diagram that depicts the design of our example program. The main thread invokes the main entry point method of the ping pong wrong class, which creates and starts two other Java threads whose run hook methods implement the ping pong algorithm concurrently. This link contains the code we're about to examine. The entire example is implemented within the ping pong wrong class, which contains a static data member that stores the number of times each thread prints ping and pong. It also contains a static nested class called play ping pong thread, 
that extends the Java thread class and runs the ping pong logic concurrently. The play ping pong thread constructor stores a string to print for each ping and pong operation. The play ping pong thread run hook method contains a loop that performs the ping pong algorithm, which iterates for the designated number of times and prints some information to the console. Note the lack of proper synchronization, which we'll discuss shortly and remedy later. When the loop is done, the method, and thus the thread, exits. Here's the main entry point method of the ping pong wrong class. This method executes in the main thread and creates two play ping pong thread objects, passing in parameters that indicate whether to print a ping or a pong string. It then starts both threads, which triggers the Java virtual machine to invoke their run hook methods to execute the ping pong algorithm concurrently. Next, it calls the thread's join methods and waits for both of them to exit before wrapping up and returning from the main thread. This second example showed how to create, start, run, and join multiple Java threads. Although these methods are used properly, the results are incorrect since there's no synchronization to ensure the threads alternate their output as intended. In particular, the ping thread prints all of its output and then exits before the pong thread even has a chance to run. We'll fix this problem later in this module, after we cover Java semaphores and countdown latches, so that the ping and pong threads will alternate printing their output to the console, as shown on this slide. In summary, synchronization and scheduling mechanisms are important for multi-threaded Java programs such as our buggy producer and consumer and ping pong program examples described in this video. The buggy producer consumer program showed how race conditions can occur if critical sections aren't properly protected via synchronization mechanisms. Once we fix these problems, we'll see that there are also scheduling issues to resolve. Likewise, the buggy ping pong program showed how results may be incorrect if threads don't execute in the right order. Our examples also have other design limitations. For example, they're hard-coded and thus handcuffed to work only as Java console applications and can't be run without modifications in Android, where only the user interface thread can print to the display. Our revised solutions covered throughout this module will therefore apply various gang of four and POSA patterns to make these multi-threaded programs more portable, reusable, and extensible.